Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel, and I'm going to now be making a video about or on a paper which took which was for June 2021, the P1 International A Level Edexcel um, Pure Mathematics P1 paper. This was again a session which was not a normal type of session, um, although they did release a paper for that summer which was called the Unseen Paper and it was like given a certain time during um, the exams um, in May sometime and it was also like available for centers to use after the official uh, release date well, it was a bit of a strange type of situation because of COVID so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this exam now and um, have it ready for release just before the October session for those students who want to you know, uh, practice and revise for the October session in 2021. So um, without further ado, let's go on with question number one. Now, question number one here says the curve C has equation Y equals X squared over three plus four over the square root of X plus eight over three X minus five, where X is greater than zero. Find dy dx. So part A of the question says find dy dx, giving you answer in its simplest form. Okay, so we have to differentiate this. We've got to find the first differential of this um, equation. Y equals x squared over 3 plus 4 over root x plus 8 over 3x minus 5. So in order to first, um, in order to differentiate, we should first prepare all the terms to make them easy to differentiate. So what I'm going to do is write everything in index form. Now, x squared over 3 is okay. It's already in index form. This is like a third x squared. I'll just keep it as x squared over 3 for now. Now, 4 over root x. Well, the 4 is on the denominator, but the root x is in the denominator. And 1 over the square root of x is the same as 1 over. Now, the square root of a number is the same thing as that number to the power of a half. Okay, so that's one of the things that you should know to convert it from third form into index form. Because x to the power of a half times x to the power of a half, when you multiply two numbers with the same base, um, uh, you have to add the powers, that gives you x to the power of 1, which is x. So that means the square root of x is x to the power of a half, because x to the power of a half times itself gives you um, 1. Um, x to the power of 1, which is x. So the square root of x is the same as x to the power of a half. So 1 over x to the power of a half is the same as x to the power of minus a half. You want to write this in the numerator. you got to write it with a negative power. The negative power means the reciprocal of. So x to the power of minus a half is the same as 1 over x to the power of a half. Okay, so this is 4x to the power of negative a half. Okay, and then you have plus and you have 8. And this is over 3. The 3 is in the denominator. Now the x is in the numerator and 1 over x is the same as x to the power of negative 1. So this is 8 over 3, x to the power of negative 1, and then you have your minus 5 at the end. Okay, this is not differentiated yet. This is just preparing it for differentiation. Okay, a common mistake here would be to bring the 3 up with it as well. Okay, so you, the 3 is already in the denominator. It's the x, which is to the power of 1, which you want to write it, x to the power of minus 1 on top. You can't write the 3 on top as well. Okay, because then the 3 would also have to be to the power of minus 1. Okay, so you don't need to do that. So 8 over 3, x to the power of minus 1, minus 5. Now it's ready for us to differentiate. So we're going to differentiate, and then if we need to simplify, we'll simplify further. So now we write dy dx. Don't write dy dx before you start actually differentiating. Now to differentiate something you, uh, of this form, we multiply by the power and take 1 from the power. So this will be 2 over 3x to the power of 1. Multiply by the power, take 1 from the power. Minus a half times plus 4 is minus 2 x, if you take 1 from minus a half, you get minus 3 over 2. It's minus 1 minus 2 over 2, which is minus 3 over 2. Again, multiply by the power. Minus 1 times plus 8 over 3 is minus 8 over 3. Take 1 from the power. You have x to the power of minus 2. And any constant when you differentiate will come 0. So there's the answer. You can leave it like this. It's better not to write the 1 here. So what we could do, we could write it in a number of ways. I could put 2 thirds x minus 2x to the power of minus 3 over 2, minus 8 over 3x to the power of minus 2. I can write it like that. Or, if you write it like this, it's still fine. 2 thirds x minus 2 over x to the power of 3 over 2, minus 8 over 3x to the power of 2. That's also um, 
a legitimate answer or you could even write it as dy dx equals again two-thirds x you could write this as minus 2 over and this is like the square root of x cubed minus 8 over 3x squared okay so all of these are perfectly correct I would probably write my answer here in this form okay all three of them are perfectly uh, correct answers okay this is like the power is 3 and the root is 2 so the square root means that means the square root of x cubed that's how you can write from um, index form to third form okay so all of these are correct answers okay so that's for part a and now we're going to move on to part b okay so part b it says the point p43 lies on the curve c which is given by this equation find the equation of the normal to c at the point p write your answer in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero where a b and c are integers to be found okay so now uh, in this question they gave us a point and they gave us the x and y coordinates of the point so that's fine normally or sometimes they would say find the equation of the normal to c at the point p where x equals four and you'd have to find what y is by putting four into this equation to find what y is at that point but here we don't actually need to do that they gave us the point actual point now to find the equation of a normal now a normal is a straight line so a normal is a straight line which is perpendicular to the tangent of a curve so just imagine the curve looks something like this we don't, of course I haven't drawn it so we won't know what it looks like at that point but um, just say at that particular point the curve looks something like this okay um, then this would be the tangent to the curve it's, it's, it's a line which has the same gradient of the curve at the point okay now the normal to a curve is always perpendicular to the tangent to the curve so basically it will be a line which is at right angles to the curve at that point okay at right angles to the tangent of the curve okay so this is the tangent and this is the normal so the gradient of the tangent and the normal are perpendicular so if I find the gradient of the tangent the gradient of the normal is a negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent as we know uh, lines which are perpendicular have gradients which are negative reciprocals so if I find the gradient of the tangent I will be able to find the gradient of the um, normal so first of all we want to find when x equals 4 we want to find what dy dx is so dy dx when x equals 4 that's what we need to find so dy dx will tell us the gradient and remember this is the gradient function when you differentiate f a, an equation you get the gradient function which tells us the gradient of the curve at any point that we want so what we want is uh, the point when x equals 4 so dy dx I'm going to write it in the more um, what's the word friendly way so it's 2 thirds x plus minus so okay we're looking at this minus 2 over I'm going to write it in this form because it's easier to substitute values in this is the square root of x cubed okay minus 8 over 3 x squared the x squared underneath because it's a minus uh, power as we mentioned earlier this is easy for us to put x equals 4 into here so we can say dy dx when x equals 4 is equal to 2 over 3 times 4 minus 2 over the square root of 4 cubed minus 8 over 3 times 4 squared okay so that will give us the gradient so we could put this in our calculator and calculate it you could just do it in your head that's 8 over 3 minus now the square root of 4 is 2 2 cubed is 8 2 over 8 is a quarter okay because the square root of 4 is 2 2 cubed is 8 2 over 8 is a quarter that's correct and you have 8 over 16 so this this is going to give you um, 1 over 2 because this is 16 so this is going to be 1 over 2 4 squared is 16 8 over 16 is 1 over 2 that's 1 over 6 so minus 1 over 6 okay so this will give us um, over 24 all of them have the same denominator I could just do this in my calculator but I can't be bothered to take it out so it's fine 3 times 8 is 24 8 times 8 is 64 4 times 6 is 24 1 times 6 is 6 6 times 4 is 24 1 times 4 is 4 so it's 64 minus 10 basically okay minus 6 and then minus 4 so it's 54 over 24 now I'm sure there's a number that goes into both of these I think 6 goes into both of these uh, 6 goes into 54 9 times and 6 goes into 24 4 times so 9 over 4 so the gradient of the tangent to the curve is equal to 9 over 4 that means the gradient of the normal to the curve is a negative reciprocal so it's a minus 4 over 9 
and the point that we wanted to find, which was uh, we, we were to find the gradient, uh, the equation of the normal is 4, 3. So we have the point and we have the gradient. So we can use our equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I like to use this equation, especially in, I mean, some people use, use y equals mx plus c all the time. That's perfectly fine. Okay, um, I like to use this form, especially when you've got fractions in the gradient. It just makes my life a bit easier, I think. So you have y minus y1. y1 is the y coordinate of the point, which is 3, equals m, the gradient that we need, the gradient of the normal, which is minus 4 over 9, times x minus x1, which is x value of the point, which is 4. Now, I want to write this in a form where my all the numbers, all the coefficients of the x, y, and the constant are all... Uh, integers. So I want to get rid of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply everything by 9 first. So this will be 9y minus 27 equals minus 4 equals minus 4 times x minus 4. So you have 9y minus 27 equals minus 4x plus 16. I'll bring the x on this side so that everything is positive. You want everything on one side. Okay, because it has to be written as ax plus by plus equals zero. Um, it's always needed to have the x term as a positive term, which works out nicely here. If you add 4x to both sides, you have 4x plus 9y. You have minus 27 minus 16. 27 and 16, that's 13, that's 43. So it's minus 43 equals zero. So this is the equation of the line in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero. So for those of you who like to use the form y equals mx plus c. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, the point p was 4, 3. Let me just make sure of that. This is 4, 3. And the gradient of the normal that we're trying to find the equation of was minus 4 over 9. So if you use this form, you have to put instead of y3 equals m, which is minus 4 over 9, times x, which is 4 plus c. So you have 3 equals minus 16 over 9 plus c. So c is equal to 3 plus 16 over 9, which is the same as 27 over 9 plus 16 over 9, which gives us 27, that's 37, that's 43 over 9. So we can say our equation is y equals m, which is minus 4 over 9, x plus 43 over 9. Now we want it in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero. Um, so a, b, and c have to be integers. So if you multiply everything by nine, you have nine y to get rid of the denominator. Nine y equals minus four x plus 43. And if you rearrange that and bring everything on this side, you have four x plus nine y minus 43 equals zero. Same answer, of course, just um, using a slightly different method. Okay, some people prefer to use this, which I actually do, especially when we have fractions. Uh, to deal with as a gradient um, but this is perfectly fine and it's not much different actually and there we have the answer for question number one a and b um, um, so i'm going to go on to question number two on a different video so i can separate all of these questions according to topics um, so that's question number one okay if you would like to see other questions from this paper you can go to the playlist which has a, um, a link for the playlist is will be found in the description. You'll also find a link for the the playlist for this paper in this um, the end screens that come up at the end of this paper. You'll find playlist for the rest of the paper. You'll find a playlist for this topic of differentiation. Um, you know, so all the questions about differentiation from P1 you'll find in that playlist somewhere over here and you'll find a link to, to subscribe to my channel. And at the top of the page, you'll find a link to another past paper you might be wanting to watch. Thank you very much, and see you soon.